Um, so this topic is quadratics, which is going to be plotting curves, okay? There's lots of parts of this topic and it's not just about the plotting. Basically, the entire topic builds to being able to graph them, okay? So we're jumping way ahead of time, really, by starting with graphing. But it's one of those topics where I think if we don't actually show you why the hell you're doing it, you won't see any point in it, okay? So the thing that we have to remember in this one is in linear, you know, everything was y equals mx plus c. In this topic, generally speaking, one of the ways that you can look at this is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And just like in linear, each of those little values do something, okay? And what we'll see as we do this is that the a value controls how tight the pinch of the curve is. So if it's a small number like a fraction, it's going to be a nice big shallow sort of curve. But as we increase that number, what we'll see is that curve will tighten up. Okay. The other thing is that if it's positive, it will look like a smiley face like this. But if you have a negative value for A, it will look like a sad face. Okay, so negative is sad, positive is smiley, just like in the gradient of linear. The C value, if I jump to the end there, is the same. It will shift it up or down. Okay, so that means that the curve will intercept the y-axis at whatever value that is as well. So if that's a plus 4, then you know the curve's going to go through at plus 4. It might mean that the curve turns at plus 4. Like in the example that we've got here, it's a minus nine, so the curve's actually going to turn through minus nine. But it can also mean, which we'll see in a second, that if the curve doesn't turn there, it still passes through there. So if it, it was a plus four, we had a B value, we'll see the curve might shift over and do this. But it still means that the line will intercept at the y-axis, just like it did in linear. And this will sort of start to make more sense as we go along. And then finally, we've got a B value now as well. And what this can do is this can shift the line left or right. Okay, so we've got an A value, which will control how tight the curve is or whether it's a smiley or a sad face. We've got a B value, which will shift it left and right. And we've got a C value, which will shift it up and down. So this is far more kind of like, you know, multidimensional, if you like, than what the linear is. Now, what we're doing is we're starting this off old school in a really sort of like clunky, horrible way. It's a legit strategy for doing this, but what we're using is we're using substitution here, okay? So you're getting a string of x values and you're going to sub them into the equation y equals x squared minus 9. By the way, I know that this is a quadratic because it's got an x squared. All the linear ones had x's. All of the quadratic ones have x squareds, and all the cubic ones, if you do those next year, that look like this, they have an x cubed, hence the name cubic. So when we have a look at this, I notice that I'm missing a b value. There is none, okay? So that means that I know straight away this line's going to turn around the origin. I know that it's going to pass through at minus 9, so I know the curve's going to look something like this, okay? Now, the clunky way to do this is that we fill out this table here. So when x is 0, nothing minus 9 is minus 9. 1 minus 9 is minus 8. I'm just substituting it into the equation. So 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 9 is minus 5. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 9 is nothing. That's good. That's my x-intercept. Okay. And then I'm going to go 4 squared is 16, and 16 minus 9 is 7, and then 5 squared is 25, 25 minus 9. I'm already off my chart, so I might not even bother filling out the rest, okay? So we're going to give it a scale of minus of 10s. And the thing about this one, I can cheat a little bit. I know that this one is going to reflect about the, um, the y-axis, or it's going to turn on the point of origin, or it's going to be sort of around the origin. So I can just copy my answers over like this, okay? And so when I plot them as well, I'm also going to start at zero. I like to start at zero. It doesn't always work out, but I like to start at zero. And then as I plot these, I've got one here, I've got the point here, I've got the point here, and I've got a point 
here, and I've got to point up here. So I'm just taking these as coordinates because these are building coordinates for me. You would have learnt this in year nine, but it's possible that this has become more foreign because we've had better ways of doing it. I didn't even run through this in linear with you. We just skipped straight over this for some of the other classes we're doing it by coordinates. You can copy yourself on the other side because it's just a reflection in this case. And then most importantly as well, no rulers. This is a freehand. Sometimes it doesn't work out that well, sometimes it does. I do not want to be doing this for the entire topic, okay? So the, what you're doing today is a sheet on expansion, and expansion is very limited in its usefulness in this topic, okay? We learnt to expand so that we could learn to factorise, so we're going to start factorising pretty heavily, and the factorisation gives us access to something called null factor method, which you might have learnt last year, okay? Now, it's another way of solving. So if we take the equation y equals x squared minus 9. You can use balance method on this one, but there are some questions that balance method starts to become very hard to deal with. So in this case, we're going to use something called null factor method. And null factor means that you're making one of the factors 0, okay? Null, 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this equation. I'm going to make y nothing. And so I'm going to end up with x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now, I can solve this using the balance method. I could, you know, add 9 to both sides, and then I could square root, and I'd find that x is plus or minus 3. But for the purposes of sort of showing you guys that we're going to be doing sort of factored binomials, the other way that we could factorise this is we could say, okay, therefore... Remember these ones, x plus 3 times x minus 3 equals nothing. Do you guys remember doing these last year? Yeah. And then what you do with null factor is I'm trying to make this equation equal nothing. Okay. So the answer to this is the cheats method is you just reverse the symbols. So that means that x will be minus 3 or or and rather, positive 3, because I just switched them around, okay? But if you think about that properly, if I make this minus 3, okay, minus 3 plus 3 is 0, and 0 times whatever this works out to be, minus 6, it doesn't matter, we'll make 0. But if I make the whole thing 3, 3 plus 3 makes 6, but 3 minus 3 makes nothing, but it would be 6 times nothing. Either way, it's going to end up being nothing, okay? And once i found those two answers, what I've found are the intercepts, okay? So here they are. They're at negative 3 and positive 3. And the reason that those are the x-intercepts is, remember, back here, I made y equal to nothing, okay? So that bound them to the x-axis. So that is how you find your x-intercepts, okay? And in a similar way, we'll work out how to do the turning point as well, okay? Because remember that if that's where those two pass through the line, then halfway in between them, which just happens to be zero in this case, will give me this magical point down here called the turning point. It won't always be that simple, but in this case it is, because what I can do is I can just sub x equals 0 in instead, and that will give me the y value. So if I go way back up here and I just sub it in, look, y will be nothing squared minus 9. So I achieve the turning point of when x is 0, y is minus 9, and it sits right down here exactly where we'd expect. So once we've got our heads around this, we don't need to plot all of these points. We only need a few significant points. The ones we'd be looking for are where it crosses the x-axis, usually in two spots, but sometimes only in one and sometimes not at all. The y-intercept and very importantly, the turning point. And once I've got those three points or four points, I can just plot my graph in and it's much, much faster. So that's why we're going back to expanding. 
and then we'll do that for a lesson and then we really need to punch into factorising again because if you can't factorise, you can't do the null factor method. How does that sound? I'll stop now. So just so that we are 100% all over expanding, just ignore, ignore that question altogether here, okay, and we're just going to do an expansion. Remember that you've got expansion where you might have something like this, 2x outside of x plus 6 will do, okay. Remember it's just as simple as that times that and that times that. So it's just 2x times x makes 2x squared. 2x times 6 makes 12x. Or you might have like a binomial expansion where you've got something like this. You might have x plus 3 times x plus 5, something like this. Okay. Remember it's then that times that, then that times that. You switch to the 3, that times that, then that times that. So it's x times x makes x squared x times 5 makes 5x, 3 times x makes 3x, and 3 times 5 makes 15, and you dutifully then collect up your like terms, those two are like terms, and that one would be done. Okay, So that's expansion, we need to focus on going back the other way next lesson, so make sure you're all over this expansion, we covered this fairly thoroughly in two topics last year.